Now Ato, though, has the door wide open to take that top spot. Well, a flawless run here from Ato is going to beat that 93.5, as good a score as that is. Clearly, there's room for improvement. Ato is showing some big airs himself now, up around that 11-foot range, and a big 540, well overhead high. California 1080. roll, 1080. That's one of Ato's signature moves. Now, something I want you to pay attention to in this run, there's a lot of setup airs here. There's some great tricks, don't get me wrong, like that double back 180, but then he spends a lot of time after these big tricks just setting up. Whoa! Oh, there's wow. something you don't see from him. Obviously realizing that he has to learn some or do some very technical tricks on the coping. Looked like he was trying to do a 270 to alley -oop fish brain. Couldn't quite lock on. He was. He was going for a true fish. And I like what he's trying. You know he's trying to stay competitive with his brother. He knows the catch has been excelling. Here's one of his signature moves, that California roll 1080. And another one of his signature moves, a double back 180. But between all those big tricks, he wasted a lot of time with setup airs. And then he missed this true spin fish brain attempt. So big competition jitters going on. A lot of our big guns have gone down. Here's we come to the end of round one. Let's go down to Andy Critchlow. At a competition of this magnitude, anything could happen. And the nerves are starting to show out there. Mark Engelhart, Ato Yasutoko, two of the most experienced pro skaters in the world, both taken a tumble in the first run. It's left the door wide open. Takashi Yasutoko still got to take his second run. It's a best run format. Anything could happen out there. The pressure is mounting. Thanks, Andy. Even with a fall, Takeshi Yasutoko sits on top right now as we're halfway through this competition. But look, Eito Yasutoko not even in the top five. Well, now things are going to get interesting. Will Marco DeSanti pull the triple backflip? Will Fabiola land her perfect run? Who will be world champion? Let's find out next. And the crowd is pumped and ready for round number two. And Patrick Zimmerman, who ended out with an 81.50 in round number one as he takes his second and final drop here in the championships. Patrick had a good, solid first run, so now he's got the freedom to cut loose a little bit out here. And he's really got no pressure on him at all because he is young. Nobody expects big, big things out of him. But, like I said before, when he competed in Munich against the stacked field, he ended up getting fourth, so he's shown he's got some talent. And looking good so far here, shown some good lip trick spinning, 270 into the backside far Nugan. Also had an Ali Macchio a little bit earlier, now setting up. Forward 900, very solid. Much lower than our guys at the top of the field, but a solid trick nonetheless. Now setting up Fakie, coming in backwards as he goes. Fakie 360 to Ali Mizu. An impressive array of tricks on the coping. That run had some big difficulty, but at the same time, there's his dad cheering him on. At the same time, it lacked some of the amplitude you see from some of the elite guys at the top of the field right now. But you know, as a young guy, you can go out there and land your tricks. Give you a lot of momentum, a lot of confidence going into the future. That was a look at the 900. And a big improvement, 86.50. What a season this kid has had. Our next rider up was in the top five after one round. A young, up-and-coming rider, Thumper Nagasaka. The thing that I like about Thumper is that he's dedicated. He's not, he's not a fly-in, fly-by-night, party, crazy dude. And he works hard at what he's got. And it's really, really cool to see that he's skating so well now. His parents are on hand, and Thumper looks very, very focused at the moment. He's got so many tricks, he's got to work them all out here. He's only got 19 walls. These are good airs from Thumper. You know, in the first round, we were saying that Thumper doesn't go high enough, but here, it looks like he's working on it. Big airs to start out this run. Like to see that. Well, getting a good pump, there is a science to it. You see the Yasutokos, of course, have mastered it better than just about anybody. Whoa! 1080 from Thumper. So he is really stepping up his game here in the second round. Right into a backside Savannah. 
this is a great run so far for Thumper. And then another great lip trick as he goes true spin topside acid. So some unique lip tricks, and here's a 900 as well. So he is still going, filling up a full 50 seconds. This is great. And then another, a flat spin 720. What a run for Thunder Nagasago. That is just great. And his parents, you can see, are pleased as well. That is definitely going to bring his score up. Here's one of many highlights from that run, the 1080 from Thumper, three full rotations, and his parents are as happy as anyone in the audience. A great, great performance from the young skater, Thumper Nagasako. And an 89 even bumps him up into the fourth position. He won't make a podium, but what a great showing so far. Well, we talked about how important it is to have a good pump, and Richard Parker is going to teach us right now the fundamentals in this week's LG Trictionary. Today we're going to be talking about one of the basic things you should learn on vert, but the most important, which is your pump. If you can't pump, then you can't ride a vert ramp, so you got to make sure you get it down pro properly. You got contact with some bomb tracks from Outback, so stomp that foot and clap your hands. When you drop in a vert ramp, you want to drop in with your legs squatted, so you keep them close to the top of the vert. As you hit the transition, you want to push out the energy, which accelerates you across the flat bottom. As you're going across the flat bottom, once again you squat up. As you hit the transition, you push out on the way up, send your arms up in the air. You want to ride straight off the top of the vert ramp. This way, when you come down, you can keep your legs squatted into the top again to be able to do the same pump on the way back down. When you look at the Astoka brothers, you can see, especially with Takeshi, he's not a big guy, but he's got this pump technique completely down, and he goes the highest out of anyone. I mean, the guy goes, you know, 12 or 13 foot out the top of the vert ramp. You know, the higher you go, the more rotation you're going to be able to get into your tricks. So now you know how to pump a vert ramp. I'm Rich Parker, I'm going to go off and have a look around Manchester. Well, that ever important pump is what sets apart some of these guys. Unfortunately for Richard Parker, of course, if you look back at his first round run, he had a lot of trouble right here, went down super hard. He was the only UK skater to qualify here for this championships event, and he will not take his second run. Being helped off the ramp eventually would be okay, and is right here watching the second round as Benny Hoover took his second run. Benny Hoover was one of these guys who showed a lot of promise early in his career as being a skater who could skate very well on park courses and the vert ramp and bring some of that same amplitude and excitement to vert. Unfortunately, he has not devoted enough time to his vert skating to really be competitive there, but he still shows flashes. And obviously good enough to get invited here to the World Championships, but a 71-25 ain't going to get it done. But definitely, you know, you want to start your run with something, you know, it's really good to get them to pay attention to your run. And then, you know, do whatever else you're going to do, you know, whatever skater you are, but then end it with a bang too. And then they remember you by that. Carl takes that same approach to the street course as well, but unfortunately had trouble in the middle of his run, so he could not finish with a bang in this competition. 61 was the highest score he would get out of 100 points.